Welcome back to Grill This, Smoke That. Today we have some beef chuck short ribs on the Big Green Egg. I went to the butcher and purchased this beef chuck short rib. I was looking for plate ribs, but they didn't have any. And the beef chuck short rib is the next sequence of ribs going down the steer. So the plate ribs are the first three bones, and then after that it switches over into the short ribs. So this is what it looks like. It has one, two, three, and four bones. It has a nice thick layer of meat across the top. There is a membrane on the bottom. You do not need to remove the membrane on beef ribs. Uh, it kind of helps hold everything together. If I'm cooking pork ribs or if I was cooking beef back ribs, I would remove the membrane, but we're gonna leave it intact to hold everything together throughout the cook. And you're gonna slice these anyway instead of eating them right off the bone. So the first thing I'm going to do is trim off some of this fat cap on here. You don't have to trim all of it off, uh, but I'm gonna trim it down some. I have a nice, sharp boning knife that I'm gonna do that with. Be careful not to gouge down into the meat. So we're just taking very shallow passes. This meat is super tender. It should have a lot of marbling underneath this thick fat layer. Underneath the layer of fat, you're gonna have the silver skin. It's not absolutely imperative that you remove it. Uh, that kind of takes some of the gamey taste out of the meat when you remove the silver skin. It's more for wild game, but I'm gonna go ahead and remove some of this for presentation purposes today. Today, we're gonna hit it with the Meat Church Holy Cow Seasoning. It's his original rub, and I'm going to shake it on all the sides making sure to get it nice and coated. This is a salt, pepper, garlic blend. I'm not gonna put any on the bottom because that's where the membrane is. So it's not gonna penetrate into the meat anyway. And I'm just gonna let this sit here while I get my big green egg up to temperature. So I just lit it right before I started this process. I'm gonna let it get up to about 250 degrees and stabilize for at least 45 minutes or maybe an hour. And then we'll get these beef chuck short ribs put on there and they'll be done in about six hours. The last thing I need to do while I have a glove on is get my meter probe in there so that I can monitor the temperature. And I'm gonna go right in the middle from the side over here into the meatiest part of these ribs. And I'm just gonna leave all of this here while the pit comes up to temp. I'm not gonna put these back in the refrigerator. I'm gonna let them go ahead and come up to as close to room temperature as I can before we get them on the big green egg. I just had this open, but it should climb back up to about 250 degrees, which is where we want to be. We've got the nice blue smoke rolling here. We have our ribs on with the meter in. We're cooking indirect with a water pan at around 160 degrees internal. We will come back and wrap if the bark looks good. We're at about the two and a half hour mark. We're settled in right around 240 actually. Uh, this is down because I just opened it, but I'm looking to push the ambient temperature up to about 250 degrees. It's sitting at 191 according to my meter. You can see the bark has not started to form yet, maybe on this one edge right here. So we're hoping for a little more progress. We're at 157 degrees internal temperature. This bone is starting to poke through here. All the bones should start exposing themselves soon. You can see a little bit of them on the backside, but we're gonna shut it back down and let it keep rolling. All right, time and temp check. We are at 300 dome temp, which is about 260 on the great temp or the ambient temperature inside the egg. My internal temperature of the ribs are at 173 degrees and we're at four and a half hours. So I'm going to be taking these off now and wrapping them. I have some peach paper here that I'm spraying down with apple cider vinegar. It makes it more pliable and keeps it from instantly sticking to the ribs. I'm gonna use tongs today because I don't want to ruin another pair of nitrile gloves. I'll give you a quick peek at it. We got some bone exposure on this side and that, and I'm gonna go ahead and get it wrapped and put back on. We are in a stall right now. It's not a huge stall, but just a little bit of a stall right now. So we are getting closer to this powering through and being done. 
I'm just gonna wrap it up and get it right back on. And then we'll let it sit here until it hits about 203 and then we'll start checking it. We can let this go a little bit higher than brisket, maybe up to 205 or 207. According to the meter app, we're at 203 degrees internal temperature. So I have my thermopin here, the MK4, and I'm going to just check a few different places and it is going in like butter. I'm at 206 there, there's a bone. It's really hard to go through the paper and not hit a bone, but we are in the 205 to 208 range. So I'm going to go ahead and take this off. We're going to be eating in just 45 minutes, which is the minimal amount of rest time that you should have. So I'm not going to wrap this. If you're gonna be resting it for over an hour, I would suggest wrapping it in a towel. If you're going to be resting more than an hour and a half, I suggest you wrap it in a towel and put it in a cooler. So I have a dedicated cooler that I use for barbecue. It's an older style cooler, not a nice roto mold one. You don't need all that unless you're holding it for four or five hours. But you can rest this up to four or five hours in one of those really nice coolers. But again, we're resting it on the counter today just wrap like it is for 45 minutes, then I'll pull it out and take a peek. The hardest part is not peeking right now. So you'll notice that the paper is all nice and greasy. So we know that some of the juices have been absorbed by the paper, but it's also let it breathe. So it should have preserved that bark on the ribs. Moment of truth here. I haven't looked at all. I'm gonna tear this open. Try to lift it and get it on this cutting board without it falling apart. So I sliced off this first rib here. You can see a beautiful smoke ring on the top and the bottom. Really nice crust. Get a nice close up there. Next thing I'm going to do is slide these bones out. They should slide right out. And they do nice and clean. No resistance. This bone actually pulled the opposite direction, so I'm gonna to try to slide it out this way. And then you can chop this up into sections and let your guests pick what they want. It's such a beautiful piece of meat. I love the big dino bone feel to this. Can't wait to sink my teeth into it. Let's eat, y'all. I'm assuming that you're only here because you love cooking. So if you found the video helpful, give it a thumbs up and go ahead and click that subscribe button. I post weekly videos on either the Big Green Egg or the Blackstone. If you like the shirt I'm wearing, there's a link to order your own in the description of this video. Any materials that I use will be linked in the description and in the pinned comment. Let me know if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos by dropping a comment below. And as always, I hope you guys have a great day.